Well, howdy, folks. Welcome to episode 32 of Do Not Worry. I'm your host, Anthony, coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut in Jaitewa. Before I get into anything, folks, Benjamin, remember Benjamin came back? Where's little Benjamin? There he is. Benjamin came back. He wanted to say hi. Benjamin, you want to say something? Well, hey there, folks. Man, it feels like it's been like like six months or five months since I've been on the podcast. I'm just so happy to be here. Like, what have you been up to? Like, what, what topics are you talking about today, Anthony? Well, Benjamin, I'm happy you asked. Today, I'm going to be talking about Patreon. Folks, I just launched my Patreon. I need you guys' support to hire an intern i'm gonna i'm gonna break it down i'm gonna break down the tiers i know it's weird me asking for money i'm gonna explain everything i will make it make sense but that is topic number one uh topic number two it is with a heavy heart that i must announce the death and the end of the anthony and latoya podcast Um, i'm gonna get into it i'm gonna give you guys you know what happened behind the scenes obviously i'm gonna give you like my side of the story latoya may not agree with all of it hey latoya if you're watching how's it going uh uh, so yeah, that, that is the uh, unfortunate news. <laughs> Dr. Food. Dr. Food, folks. Uh, I, now I talked about Dr. Food before on this podcast, and I didn't really give him his due. And I think I ended up giving him more credit than I should have. I said he was a better foodie than, than Daddy Foodie and all that shit. I'm going to take it back this week, folks. I apologize. We're going to be exposing some, some shitty Dr. Food videos that you guys sent me. And uh, I might have some surprising things to say about Daddy Foodie. I'm also going to reveal exclusively on this podcast a DM conversation that I had with No Garlic, No Onions a few years ago about Daddy Foodie. And uh, No Garlic, No Onions was talking shit about Daddy Foodie. He was talking behind your back, Daddy. Uh, So I'm going to expose that later today. So if you guys want some sweet, tasty foodie drama, stick around. There's one other topic that, honestly, I've been going back and forth on whether or not to talk about it for weeks, literally weeks. Uh, Honestly, if I talk about it on this podcast, I'm going to get canceled or something. So I think I'm going to save that one to be a Patreon exclusive. I'll tell you guys uh, about the exclusives in a bit once we get into the topic. But we I already think I know what the first Patreon exclusive video is going to be. Uh, And I might talk about BattleBots at the end. It's a show on Netflix. People build robots and the robots fight in a giant ring. It's fucking awesome. So I might want to talk about that for a second. And obviously, don't forget to like the video. Leave a comment. Your engagement is extremely valuable for a small independent channel like mine. So do that and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet become a Do Not Warrior. Help me get to 5,000 subscribers. Let's get kicked off. All right, folks, so I finally did it. After many months of thinking about it, going back and forth, I just launched a Patreon uh, where you guys can support me financially if you want. I'm going to explain everything. I'm going to explain the different levels. First of all, what is Patreon? Patreon is this like online service where viewers, you know, fans of, of, of YouTubers, of any kind of creator, it could be a podcaster, it could be a writer, you can pitch in money every month uh, and help support these creators as they create, you know, whatever entertainment it is that you enjoy. Uh, I don't make any money off of this podcast. Uh, I make a little bit of money off of YouTube advertisements, about 60 or $70 a month. Sometimes it'll be a hundred if, if, um, if a video does really well, but my videos also tend to get into some trouble with copyright because I, I use a lot of other videos that I look at, that I react to sometimes before I upload, it seems like the video is going to be fine, but a couple of days later I'll get I'll get a copyright, you know, strike on the video or something. So revenue off of advertising is not very reliable on YouTube, at least not for me. But it's really not really about money for me. So full disclosure, I currently have a full time job. I am lucky to have a full time job. Um, I get I get a good pay. So I'm not asking for money for myself. But the fact that I have a job means that I have less time to work on this channel. Uh, When I started this channel, I was unemployed, so I could spend all of my free time making these episodes, doing research, downloading TikToks, looking through TikToks, editing, all of that. Now that I have a full-time job, it is much more difficult to, to do that. And I've been struggling with particularly research and prep. Like for example, if I get an idea for a really cool video and I want to do a deep dive on a certain content creator, well, it's going to take me a couple of hours to dig through their TikToks, dig through their Instagrams, find the cringiest videos, and then I have to put them together, and then I have to, and then by the time I react to them on the video, I've already seen these videos multiple times, but it's taking me a lot of time, and what that is leading to is me skipping some episodes. I need two weeks to, to fully prepare an episode before I'm able to do it. Sometimes, like when I did the awards show, I needed a week just to, as a break, because it took so much out of me. It, it took a lot of time to download all those videos for the different nominees. It took hours of editing, 
I'm a one-man team. I do this completely on my own. I prep, I, I, I research, I shoot, I edit, I do the thumbnails. I even composed the intro music to this podcast. I don't even know how to make music, but I composed the intro music. I'm super hands-on like this. I do everything by myself. I'm literally a one-man team, so I need help. And I can't afford to hire someone myself. I can't afford to pay someone a salary uh, myself, but I want to. I don't want to hire an intern and not pay them. So this is where you guys come in. I need you guys those of you who can, and I know we live in Lebanon, I know the vast majority of my viewers cannot contribute, and that's okay. There's zero pressure for anyone to contribute. I am fully aware that I'm gonna have like max like five patrons, and I'm gonna make like $25 a month. I have no, no illusions about what this is going to be, but I figured I have to try. I have to try and I have to start somewhere. 25 bucks is better than no money, and if I can combine that 25 bucks with a little bit of my advertising money, uh, maybe I can have something that I can pay someone with, at least to help me with a couple of videos per month. I hope this is all making sense. Let me open up my Patreon and show you what I'm talking about. What are the different tiers? What will you guys get in return for, uh, for your investment? Okay, so here is my Patreon page. Uh, I just got it done literally like today. Uh, this thank you Luai, for the beautiful art. I really appreciate it uh, Again, so let me let me walk you guys through the tiers. But before I do that again I know how crazy this is. I know that it's insane for me to be asking for for dollars for YouTube videos We're in Lebanon. No one has dollars. No one has a job No one has access to like a credit card that even lets you do this This is for a vast minority of my viewers the ones that like real that, that maybe live abroad that are really massive fans that really want to help support this channel and see the content continue because it's getting harder and harder to do this by myself, like I'm saying. So um, I'll be shocked if I'll have, I'm telling you, I'll be shocked if I have five patrons when this is all said and done. And I'm sure like half of them are going to be like family members and stuff. So I, I, again, yeah. So anyways, the first tier for $5 a month, you will become an abductee. And what do you get for $5 a month? Well, for $5 a month, your name will be listed in the credits at the end of every video that I produce on the channel. If it's an episode of Do Not Worry, if it's something else, some kind of vlog, whatever it is, your name will be listed in the credits. Your name will also be listed in the credits of my upcoming documentary. I'm working on a very special documentary that I plan on announcing very soon, maybe next week. Uh, your name is going to be in the credits for that documentary. So that's pretty cool. Um, you're going to get access to a Discord server um, coming soon. Look, I've never used Discord, okay? I, I feel like such a boomer. But uh, I'm going to be doing a Discord server, okay? Whatever that means for, for all our Do Not Worry patrons, okay? So we'll all be in there chatting, sending videos. It'll be fun, okay? It's going to be fun. So we're going to have access to a Discord. It's going to come eventually. Let me just figure it out. Um, you're going to receive patron-only updates. So, like, maybe some sneak peeks into some upcoming videos, uh, some behind-the-scenes looks. Just stuff that only you guys will get that other people will not have access to. And finally, you'll get uh, access to exclusive polls on Patreon that will help me decide what content to talk about on the podcast. If there are a couple of topics that I'm not sure of or I want to pick one of them, you guys will vote and you guys will choose what I end up talking about. So you guys are going to have a lot of power. You know what I mean? And like if it's only a few of you, if it's like three patrons... You know, three people are going to decide the course of like, you know, what topics are going to be discussed on the podcast. So five bucks a month. I hope you guys think this is this is good value. Please let me know in the comments. Uh, now for three extra dollars for eight dollars a month, folks, you will join my blonde tier. OK, for eight dollars a month. Now, normally the, the standard in Patreon is five, ten, twenty five I thought 10 was, was pushing it a little bit. So I, I think eight is fair. It's just a little bit, it's just, you know, it's low enough to entice you to add that three extra bucks, you know, jump from five to eight, but you get, you get some goodies for eight bucks, yo. You get some pretty good goodies. So again, all of the benefits you get in the uh, regular, in the abductee tier, you're gonna get them in the blonde tier. So your name in the credits, your name in the credits for the documentary, Discord server, patron only updates and the polls, you get all of that. But on top of that, Okay, on top of that, you get one exclusive video per month. It could either be an extra juicy do not worry segment that is too controversial to be on the main episode, like one of today's topics that I'm going to shoot exclusively for Patreon. Uh, it could be a behind the scenes video. It could be some movie or TV recommendations. Just it's going to be a bonus video a month. I'm not sure what it's going to be, but you guys are going to get at least one piece of extra content every month. And I'm going to try to make it as juicy and as enticing as possible. Uh, and finally, I will give you a shout out on my podcast every few episodes. So if your name is Billy Johnson, you know, every couple episodes, I'll be like, hey, Billy, thank you for thank you for your contribution, Mr. Billy Johnson. Couldn't do this without you. So, yeah, if you want to hear my beautiful voice, say your name on the air.
Become a blonde patron. Join my blonde tier for $8 a month for the price of a large coffee. And, okay, now this is the uber ridiculous one. 20 bucks. Obviously, guys, who the fuck is going to pay 20 bucks to subscribe to my Patreon? Obviously, no one. But anyways, look, I even say it in the intro. I'm like, well, I guess you've got some deep pockets and must really, really love me. Uh, so this is obviously for, like, super fans who, who have the money, who are okay with, like, hey, you know what? I like this guy. Here's 20 bucks a month. Uh, you do you, okay? I can't promise you that you're going to enjoy the benefits because, like, I don't like, what, do you want me to come give you a lap dance or something? Anyways, you get all of the benefits that we discussed earlier. So you get the shout outs, you get the name of the credits, you get the exclusive video every month. You also get, you're also going to get to find out about upcoming projects and share your input. That I think is the most valuable. So for example, the documentary that I'm currently working on, I'll let you in on it. You'll know about it. You'll get to give me some ideas. I'll get to share some ideas. Maybe I'll show you a little sneak peek, a little behind the scenes. So uh, yeah, so that I think is, is, is pretty fucking awesome. Uh, you're gonna get a, a monthly live chat. Look, some of these might change. Okay, if I remove anything, I'll make sure to replace it with something equally cool. But monthly live chat, I think that should be pretty cool. We get to talk every month. I get to give you some updates. Might be redundant with, with the other thing, so I'm not sure. But anyways, and 20% off any merch whenever it becomes available. So mainly the main benefit of this one for now is that you're going to be, you're going to find out about extra projects. But really, dude, this isn't really about the perks. If you're paying me 20 bucks a month, it's because I guess you have a lot of money and you want to support me. So that's that. Uh, keep scrolling down. I, I've written a little text down there kind of explaining that, again, I'm a one-man team. I'm doing this because I need help. I need to hire someone. And well, first of all, to give you guys even more clarification, before I even start with the intern, uh, I'm going to be shooting a documentary pretty soon. So at first, I'm going to be using the money to pay for a videographer. And then that will switch. That'll become like a, uh, you know, a salary for an intern. Hopefully, hopefully, no guarantees, uh, but like I, I, I don't like having people working for free, obviously, and I don't want to pay anyone in, in Lebanese pounds. I want to be able to pay them in dollars. OK, so that's that. Uh, if you're interested, guys, if you're interested, get on Patreon. The link is going to be in the description of this video and uh, pick a tier that's right for you. I, I immensely appreciate your support. And for anyone who who can't afford this guys don't even don't even I don't even want to get messages from people like hey dude I really wanted to support you but I can't I don't even want to hear it folks the fact that you guys watch my videos you like them you share them you leave a comment it means more than enough for me honestly so I love you guys there is zero pressure from anyone from anyone to contribute a single fucking penny Okay, and the show is always going to remain free. It's always going to be on YouTube. You, got, you, you will be able to watch it anytime. My main concern is that I'm worried that that doing this alone with a full time job, I don't know how consistent I'm going to be able to be. That's my main fear. That is why I want to use this money to hire people to help me. Um, and that is mainly it. And I know what some people are going to say, but Anthony, didn't you complain that the Grand Factory was raising money? Listen, folks, there's a difference between me, an independent YouTube content creator, who, asking for five bucks a month versus, you know, like a corporation or like, you know, an organization that has 50 or 47 partners asking for $250,000. I think there's a difference. The way we look at this is like when you go to a restaurant, you tip your waiter and you don't think twice about it. When you go to a bar, you tip your bartender. He gave you a service. You enjoyed that service. You appreciated it. You gave him a tip. You're walking in the subway. You see a performer singing. You throw a couple of bucks in their hat. We we usually tip people for doing things that we enjoy when it comes to YouTube and stuff. I think people have gotten so used to just having this content for free. And hey, I don't blame you guys. I'm used to it. I love that shit, too. But I think we find the idea of tipping a creator strange when it really shouldn't be like, again, but I spend a lot of time making these videos. I spend a lot of time prepping them, editing them. I love it. It's really enjoyable. But um, it like these 30 or 40 minute videos that appear on YouTube don't come out of thin air. You know what I mean? There's a lot of work that goes behind it. And and I don't think it's wrong for people to, you know, show some appreciation for their creators. And if it's, you know, throwing a couple bucks towards them, you know, every month, then then that's cool. I think I went on about this for a very long time. I'm sorry, but this was very important for me to explain because it's awkward to ask for money. You know what I mean? And again, it's not really money that I need for me to survive. It's money that I need for the channel. But again, asking for money is asking for money. And I'm not going to do that unless I feel that, that I've explained myself, that you guys know where I'm coming from. And um, I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. What do you think about the tiers? Are there things that you would like to see added to those tiers? I'm very curious. 
Um, I hope I didn't forget to say something important. God damn it. But uh, I think that should be it. Okay, folks, it's time for a little awkward story time with Anthony. Okay, it's time to talk about Anthony and LaToya. As you guys may have noticed, the podcast disappeared after episode two. And uh, yeah, we never came back for a third. I figured since, since I talked about this podcast so much before it happened, and since I hyped it up, and since we did a teaser and all of that, I, I wasn't just going to like you know let it disappear without at least addressing it. And I don't want to just half-ass address it and like, you know, I want to be honest with you guys. This is a podcast about me being honest and telling you things how they are. So I don't want to hide shit from you guys. I, I fucking hyped up this podcast for like two months and then it disappeared after two episodes. There's no shame in that. Uh, but yeah, let's get into some story time. So Anthony and LaToya, by the way, I, me and LaToya are cool. I think, you know, it's, it's a little awkward between us, but like we're still friendly-ish, I would say. Okay. Uh, so what happened? First of all, LaToya and I, when, when, when I proposed a podcast to LaToya, and when we talked about it, I was unemployed. I had, all I had was do not worry. That was my everything. So to me, the idea of doing a second podcast seemed very feasible. You know, I'm like, I got no job. This will do that. And, and I wanted to, you know, build this whole uh, strategy around YouTube. And I wanted to make it my primary source of income. Patreon was going to be a part of that and, and, and a lot of things. So again, so that is one thing. Before we started the podcast, I got offered a full-time job and I accepted it. So that already is a factor that worked against the podcast. I was suddenly way more overwhelmed with work. I thought I could make a full-time job and two long and, you know, like, you know, 30, 40 minute podcasts happened that I bit off more than I could chew at that point. Now, again, when we talked about it at first, I didn't have a full-time job. So LaToya has nothing to do with that. Um, if anything, I'm the one who changed, who altered Yanis the, uh, the circumstances around the podcast. I was still, and I, I, I did do my best to make it happen. I never, we never, like, I never skipped an episode because of my work or anything like that. And my job has been very flexible in giving me the time to, to do my podcast. That is one factor. I was busier than I thought I was going to be. And I was more overwhelmed than what I thought I was going to be. So that's the first factor. The second factor. So when Latoya and I first, uh, we hung out a couple of times before, you know, we started planning the podcast and everything just to talk, talk about the podcast and stuff like that. We had a blast. She and I had a lot of fun. Uh, she's, uh, you know, she was super fun to hang out with. We had a couple of drinks. We got along great. Um, and I really thought that there would be a lot of potential for us. Uh, a few weeks later, we started to work on the podcast. And I'd say that's when... I kind of started to, my enthusiasm for the podcast started to dip. And that's something that I also, I didn't really tell LaToya. I maybe, I maybe hinted at it later, but I never told her that directly. But like, I kind of started to lose faith in the show before we even ever got to film. And that is maybe my fault. That is where I'm not, and I'm not going to get into details because I'm not trying to get into fights and stuff with LaToya. But like LaToya and I don't work the same way. We have different work ethics. We have maybe different, different uh, schedules. We don't work the exact same way. So I was already kind of becoming a little bit hesitant. Like, is, are we on the same page? Was I maybe not very clear of like the expectations that we had from each other? Again, this is, take this with a grain of salt. I'm giving you my side of the story. But I, I started to have some doubts before we even started to shoot the podcast that this was maybe not the right fit. That maybe the LaToya, the chemistry that LaToya and I had while drinking and hanging out was different than the chemistry that she and I had when we were working together. And sure enough, I think that ended up being the case. So setting up the podcast and, and just like, you know, working on like the, the paint and all of that and the logos and stuff, that's one thing. Then once we got to also, I think, actually shooting the episodes and uh, working together, mainly in editing, I think this is where the rift really started to, to show and where uh, we just did not really get along. And I gotta be honest here, I don't wanna lie to you guys. I don't, I don't like hiding shit and it's okay, people, don't get along all the time. People have different creative visions for things. You know what I mean? So you're putting a strong-minded and strong-willed person like Latoya and me, who's also strong-minded. I'm very opinionated. I have my own visions together into editing a video. Things got unpleasant sometimes and it wasn't enjoyable. Not for me, probably not for Latoya. Uh, and I, I'm not used to having people telling me like what I can't or can't include in my videos. So I wasn't really uh, vibing with that. 
It's like water and olive oil. You can try to mix them, but they're just not gonna mix. I thought we were peanut butter and jelly, but we ended up being water and olive oil. But regardless, I don't think these were problems that could not be solved. You know what I mean? And um, I think definitely with time, with more episodes, we would have found our groove. The show would have improved because uh, the first two episodes weren't the best. Like, you know, we're finding our groove. We're working on it. But I'm sure the show would have gone better. And you could, if, if you want to blame me for ending it too short or, um, or giving up on it too soon, you could. And while, while I didn't officially end the podcast myself, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I almost did. After the second episode, I hit up Latoya and I was like, listen, I value our friendship more than I value this podcast. And I feel like this podcast is ruining our friendship. So I was ready to cancel it after the second episode because we had a pretty big argument during editing and I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to keep doing this. I, I don't have a lot of free time um, and I want to use the free time that I have doing things that don't involve arguing and stuff like that. I, I told Latoya, like, I don't know if I want to continue. To her credit, man, Latoya said what most of you are probably thinking, like, dude, it's too soon. Give it a try. Like, let's give it more time. We haven't, we haven't given it enough of a chance. And she's right. But the problem is that I had already kind of given up on it before we started shooting. So by the time that second episode came around and she and I had that l little spat while editing, I was already kind of over it, you know, and I should have canceled it then. I just didn't have the courage to because I, I like Latoya and I didn't want to hurt her feelings. I essentially was like, listen, let me think about it. And I was thinking about it. What happened then? Two days later, I get fucking COVID. I get fucking Corona. So for almost three weeks, even if Latoya and I wanted to do a third episode and I had a third episode ready, I had a bunch of topics lined up for like a comeback episode. Two, three weeks go by. We barely talk. Uh, she, 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 she would check up on me quite often. But like, uh, you know, we, we would never talk about the podcast. And as the weeks went on, we just didn't talk about it at all. We barely spoke at all about anything. I think during the, the time I had COVID, she may have ended up finding some kind of gig in Dubai. Go slay. You earned it. You deserve it. Uh, so I think even like by the time I was done with COVID, she she had found something else, which I mean, would have. I mean, also, that would not have been cool. Even if the podcast was going great, like it would have sucked if she had to leave, you know, but. And we just kind of stopped talking, man. It became a little bit awkward. Like, um, I wished her a happy birthday, you know. I asked her to perform a song for the Do Not Worry Awards. Uh, she, she tried, but she wasn't able to send me anything. I was, I, was, I was sad I wanted to have Latoya be a part of the awards. But that's mainly it, man. Like, I know, it's, I know it, it's awkward and it sucks. I wish nothing but the best for Latoya, man. But I just wanted to be honest with you guys. And, like, look, I, I, why am I going... Why am I talking about this, man? I, I just want to show you guys that it's okay to like admit defeat sometimes. Admit that you fucked up. Like I miscalculated. I made a miscalculation. Like, do you guys think I wanted to to get rid of this fucking podcast? I spent a lot of money, man. And Latoya spent some money too. Like we we paid for a logo, we paid for a neon, but like I, I really went all out, man. I bought a new camera. I almost bought two new cameras so that we each could have like a, a different angle. I bought a camera, I built a fucking table, I painted the whole fucking studio, I bought a new fucking microphone. I went all in on this podcast. Like I really believed in this fucking show with Latoya. I even told her at one point, like if if the podcast goes well, I might even stop doing Do Not Worry for a while and just focus on Anthony and Latoya. Have that be the main podcast. Because coming, one of my main worries is that you guys are going to get bored of this podcast. So I wanted to keep it fresh. I wanted to give you guys some new entertainment. Um, I'm not happy this thing fucking ended. I have this fucking this fucking beautiful ass neon that we can't use. You know what I mean? Beautiful logo that Ayan designed for us. Like a uh, great intro song that Latoya did. Like I feel sad. Like I, I privated. I removed the videos off of the channel because looking at them makes me sad because it reminds me of this, this wasted potential. And now here I am sitting in this room with like a thousand dollar new YouTube set that I can't use. I am going to use it eventually. Just heads up, Latoya. I'm going to figure out something with that neon. But like, I got to milk that money. But I am upset. Like, don't think I, I take any pleasure in this. Uh, there's, I, I've got nothing to, to gain from this. It, I've lost. You know what I mean? It's, uh, my friendship with Latoya is a little bit awkward now. Uh, I might lose some subscribers because some of you guys subscribed for Latoya, her friends and stuff. So, hey, guys, if you want to unsubscribe, I guess now's the time. I lost money. So did Latoya. Not as much as me, though. This is it. This is it. It's just 
Water and olive oil. Just couldn't mix. I also, I want to add one thing. I also don't think Latoya watched the references that I sent her because I sent her so many episodes of Frenemies. I don't know if she watched that shit. Because if she, if she had watched Frenemies, she would have known the kind of show that we were going to do and that we were going to be arguing and stuff. And I think that's one of the problems too. Like she really didn't like the first episode. That was me just trying to do Frenemies. And I don't think she knew what she was getting herself into. That's that. Uh, whatever Latoya's gig is in Dubai, I hope it goes well. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Because like I said, we're not really talking. I, I did message her right before shooting this episode, letting her know that I'm going to be talking about this. If Latoya ever wants to share her side of the story, if she feels like I, I misrepresented something, you know, she can feel free. Yeah, I'm sorry that if for fans of the show, I'm sorry that it's gone. For Latoya, I'm sorry that it did not work out. Yeah, that's it. Dr. Food time, folks. So Dr. Food is this Lebanese foodie who I talked about a few weeks ago, a few episodes ago, okay? And I, I did not give the guy his due, okay? I was just like doing a half-assed reaction to him reviewing burgers or some shit. But he got, he got into some hot water uh, last week when he, uh, he released like this fucking Instagram reel uh, and TikTok or whatever. Here, let's watch it. It's pretty racist, pretty fucked up. Let's check that shit out. Dr. Food, Dr. Food. Okay, sushi alik. من أقدم المحلات بلبنان ومن أهم محلات انفتحت بلبنان سوشي. الدكتور فود موجود عنده. بكون تعرفوا من الدكتور فود. بكون تعرفوا المصداقية تبعونا. بكون تعرفوا من نحنا شو عم نعمل. لح تحضروا شيء بلبنان وبالدول العربية ما صار مثله. لح يصير في تغيرات. لح نفوت. لح نكسر. لح نغير. لح نضبط. أول من الشرطية رح يشيلوا الضبط. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, what the fuck is he even talking about? Like, is he a partner in Sushi Hall? Like, and like the way when people do this thing to the camera, like, we're not supposed to see you do this. We're only supposed to see your hand go there. And then that's it. Like, hey, the transition. So he's even doing that wrong. That's what's pretty fucked up how he's shoving that chef. Here he is eating honey in a really stupid way. And then daddy street eat on TikTok. Uh, called him out on it. Daddy Street Eat calls him out. So let's check out that video. مم. ما ترأينا انه طيب هيك بياكلوا العسل مش متلك يا مقرف يا خشيم يا متعدة هيك بياكلوا العسل والله انك واحد مقرف ما فهمين شو عم تعمل He's trying to get into that ASMR game huh? You ain't got shit on my boy Elio Dacuni, okay, or Joseph Shada, you keep you keep trying, Dr. Food. Anyways, remember last week's episode, we talked about Muhammad Ramadan, came to Lebanon, uh, did this whole photo shoot in the Beirut port. Guess who was chilling with him and taking a selfie? <laughs> Such great, what a great video, Dr. Food. Let's watch one more video. Let's watch him review three different knefes from three different knefe places. We're not. I'm gonna cut through, through it a little bit, but uh, let's go. Doctor Fuchang Tamun. Doctor Fuchang Tamun. I'm going to three places to buy a nice knefe. We have Dwayne, we have Abaydor, and we have Khaled. Three of them are famous in the country. Three of them are doing good things. Let's see what's the best between them. We'll get to the first one. Let's see. Let's see. Out of those three, La Beidog is easily my favorite. Dwayhe is my least favorite, hands down. I hate their knefe. I would give them La Beidog number one, Al Halib number two, Dwayhe number three. Uh, 
يب بنستعمل شوكه باد بوي والله بعد شوكه ثمن حط وحده هون وحده للحلاب ماشي يا حلاب حطيت لك شوكه دويه مشان تتعلم مره ثانيه تبعت شوكه مع الكبيفه كيف بدنا نقبل باكلها انا؟ اوكي اف شو ثقيل هلا رح خلينا نقارنها خلينا ندوقها بشكل طلوب كعكه ثاني مره يا خيي وكلها بايديك بلا قطر اول شيء مثل ما نكون شايفين دويه شو هذا ولا بدي وين الكعك والسميد على ميلة شو ايه؟ شوفين؟ ما بعرف لا بعتها هيك شو اخر الصينية اوكي خلينا نفتحها برو هو هو ذا فاك داز ذس وذ كنافة اوبيسلي وحط لها قطر مين بياكل كنافة بلا قطر هلا خيي اتس لايك ايتينج بيتزا وذات بيتزا صوص اتس لايك ايتينج بيتزا وذات مارينيرا Hey, I'm walking here. Hello, what do you call? How do you this? People are watching you. Who's who's sitting around you? Daddy, Doctor Fuchamp, Tamil. Nia, Silsi, Jimnil, Balba, Taybe, Mahasai, Tatiri. Come and see the Abedo. لو لك شو سميكي يا زلمه؟ ما بفهم عليك. خي اعملها مثل مثل دويهي خي اعملها مثل الحلال الاخير. ما تعملوا شيء مثل دويهي، دويهي سكنافه ما بتقطع بقى. هيك محروق الكعك. ام سوري. شو؟ بي محروق اه؟ داعي بالابيدور لك ليش محروقين هيك؟ خلينا نشوفها. برو مش محروق، ذاتس ذا كولر اتس سبوز تو بي، هيديك از اندر كوكت. دويهي اندر كوكت خي هيك لونه للفريك للفرك، فرك زياده. أنا بعرف يا خيي الفرق هيك لونه مي ورد كثير واضحين بقلبها بس صراحة طيبة هي أكيد طيبة لبي دوغ برو They don't cheat you خلصت الحلاب عينك ما أبخى بعد طلع طلع بشر طلع طلع لعندي شوي لك حبيبي بدي أسألك سؤال شايف نيويورك شايفه يعني معقول حبيبي شو بيك يا يا حلاب شو بيك خيي؟ ايه شو شو بيك ولا شو بيك؟ شو هذا؟ لا لا البخر خيي، لا بعت قتل ريس، وبعت لي شقة خبز صغيرة مش بعت اثنين، وعلى راسي وعيني بعت وحدة، طيب شو هيدا؟ شو هي قدام هون؟ بصراحة بعد ما دقتهم ثلاثة تون وقرنا هون ثلاثة تون شفتوا نوعية الخبز ونوعية الجبنة الموجودة بقلبها، أبي دور محروقة مثل وجهها مش م... اوكي انا بعتمد بعطي المرتبة الأولى That's how it's supposed to look بعطي المرتبة الثانية للحلاب سبيشلي وقت بتحط لها قطر بس انه بخلك بخلك هو اللي حاطط مرتبة الثانية كنت بدي اعطيك الثالثة بس لأنه الحريقة هون اعطيتك المرتبة الثانية اوكي أبي دور بعتوا لي كعك كنافة بلا حريق ثاني مرة ماشي اوكي مثل ما شفتوا قررنا الثالثة اه اه I'm gonna have to stop this now guys too much was too much was no fucking taste no motherfucking taste baby so that's dr food folks we we need to stop him we need to stop this man from spreading more of his disgusting foodie terror on everyone and there was only one man who could stop him and um i drove him away i drove him away and that man is daddy foodie who other than daddy foodie has the the douchiness that sleaziness to out sleaze this fucker. It's daddy fucking foodie. He's the hero we needed, but that I didn't know we needed. Now he's gone. He's not making foodie content anymore. I don't know what the fuck he does. He's one of the only people who has not blocked me, by the way. So for that, I respect you, daddy foodie. Everyone else has fucking blocked me, but not you. But I don't know. In order to get Daddy Foodie back, I, I've, I've gathered a collection of before and after plastic surgery photos because I know how much you love those, Daddy Foodie. So please, Daddy. Please, Daddy, look at these. Look at that. Look at that first photo. Okay, look at that little tiny little ass. Okay, look how insignificant. And then look at that. Look at that. Look at those injections, those butt injections. Okay, look at that. How about this photo? Look at that little, tiny little butt. Look at that beautiful enlarged butt on the right. Doesn't that... Daddy Foodie, come on, please. Someone share these with him. How about this one? Look at this one. Look at that flat little butt. And then look at that beautiful, you know, whatever they, they did. Injections or, or lift or 
Just look, Daddy, come back. We need you, Daddy. Okay, I fucked up. Okay, we need you to take, we need you to take Dr. Food out. We need you. Okay, I got something else. I got one more thing for you, Daddy. Okay, I got one more thing. No garlic, no onions, okay? Probably Lebanon's most famous foodie. A guy who likes me, by the way. The only reason he likes me was because I exposed Doc, uh, Daddy Foodie a couple of years ago for his plagiarism. For those of you wondering, well, wait, no garlic, no onions. Basically, he's been fucking living in, like, super denial. Like, he's been getting a lot of criticism lately because as, like, Lebanon is burning to a crisp and, like, Akkad blew up and all of that shit. What was, what was no garlic, no onions doing? What was he up to while Lebanon was burning? Here we go. Good morning, good morning. جديد. ببلش بالرواء الناس كلها نايمة الشمس بتع الصوت لعصافير وعين عليهم والترويق جاهزة. بس شو بدأ أول شيء؟ فنجان قهوة لبنانية. Have a great day. Have a great day while you're waiting in line for gas. So yeah, he he's been living in La La Land for a while now. Here's another one. Eating a big ass burger. سؤال كيف؟ منجرب. دون. صحت صحتين. A game of textures and flavors. أول كاتشي. Who gives a fuck? Shut the fuck up, bro. He, he he doesn't even eat garlic and onions, bro. How does anyone take a guy's opinion seriously in food? When he doesn't eat garlic or onions, like I'm not even fucking kidding right now. Like the base, anytime I cook something, I start with garlic and onions, bro. How do you feel? That's your overpowering. That's what everyone does, bro. You like Bikol sandwich. He reviews chicken shawarma sandwiches, bro. So, I, how did we make him famous for food, my body, man? Okay, anyway, so he liked me. He liked me when I when I exposed Daddy Foodie, but it's something you guys need to know, okay? You can't trust me, goddammit, especially if you're a fucking influencer. I'm gonna come for you, bitch! Here's a little fun fact. Daddy Foodie, this one's for you. Okay, you can't trust this asshole, okay? I'm on your side now. I'm back on Daddy Foodie's side, folks, okay? I'm on Daddy Foodie's side. Let's open up the DMs now. Two years ago, when was this? Let me, does it give the date? November 22, 2019. I get a wink in my DMs from No Garlic, No Onions. I'm like, hello, is this about Daddy Foodie? He sends me a smiley face because I had just released uh, a video about Daddy Foodie, uh, you know, plagiarizing a whole show. I talked about it multiple times here. Then I say, I know you can't share it publicly, conflict of interest and all, but it would make things weird between you and him. But privately, send it to all the foodies you know. They need to know how he operates. I'm trying to get him to see this video because plagiarism is not okay. Uh, he responds by saying, finally, someone talks. There's a load more. Well said. I reply by saying, this is the second video I make about him. Blah, blah, blah. He's definitely not going to enjoy this one. He says, I'm sure he won't. And his 137 bot fake followers. Hmm. So he's revealing that Daddy Foodie has fake followers. I'm not saying it. No garlic, no onions is. Uh, then I say, oh yeah, that's most influencers. I have an issue with the entire industry. That was me in 2019, folks. I've been consistent. Say what you will about me, but I'm fucking consistent in my hatred for influencers. No garlic, no onion says, hey, there's someone I can talk to. It's time to unveil all the crap. I say, haha. But if you can share this internally and privately, that'd be much appreciated. Look, I was being nice to the guy. I, I was like, I like, you know, thank you for, for that. He says, I am, don't worry. So he shared the plagiarism, daddy foodie. No garlic, no onions, shared the plagiarism video to all of his friends, just so you know. Then he says, send me the link to the first video, which I did. I said, I want his colleagues to see this. Then he says, we need the brands paying him money to see it. Ooh, it's getting juicy. You hear that daddy foodie? Yeah, this was 2019, man. I should have revealed these DMs a long time ago. Uh, then he messages me and says, P.S. for your information, he's down to 135,000 followers. He lost 2K of the fake followers today with laughing emojis. Have a great Independence Day. See you later. Obviously, if you want to think that I'm an asshole for revealing this conversation, completely stabbing no garlic, no onions in the back, feel free to do so. You know, I just got to be honest. I've always found his content to be like, sahif, you know what I mean? Like... Whatever, man. You're eating a manouche. Great. So, uh, Daddy Foodie, I am willing to fight this war with you. I will join forces with you and take on no garlic, no onions, and Dr. Food and put you back on the top of the foodie food chain, goddammit! 
Okay, quick heads up to everyone watching this on YouTube. I'm about to record an exclusive, uh, a Patreon exclusive segment that will only be found on Patreon in the blonde tier. Um, I I would honestly have loved to talk about this on this podcast, but it, it is literally going to get me canceled. Okay, and for good reason. I'm, it's I'm kind of going to be a dick in this segment. Um, there's this Lebanese singer who lives in the States who started singing and like just released an album. And I saw a couple of people sharing her song like a few weeks ago. One musician person that I know shared her song being like, that's great. I love the song. Uh, you know, good luck in your career. 10 minutes later, and I didn't click on it. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Then 10 minutes later, someone else shares that same video. And their caption was like, what the fuck is this? This is horrible. You do not represent us. I'm like, okay, I got to fucking watch this video. So I clicked, I listened to the song, I watched the video. It was horrendous. It was fucking horrible. So I'm going to comment on it and talk about this fucking song and like how ridiculously horrible it is. But like, it's so bad that like, I kind of like it. But if I do it, it's, she has like less followers than me. So like, she's not famous at all. You guys are going to label it bullying for sure. Uh, I don't even disagree with that. Like, this is one of those segments that'll take me to hell. But she's fucking sponsoring it. It's everywhere. It's a fucking horrible song. So I'm going to fucking give you guys my opinion on it. We're going to listen to a little bit of it. So uh, if you're interested, if you're interested, check out Patreon. Uh, See what tier is right for you. Although this is in the blonde tier. And up, back to our scheduled programming. Uh, Folks, let's end end this episode on a positive note. Okay, I want to talk to you guys about a little show that I've been watching on Netflix called BattleBots. What time is it? It's robot fighting time, baby! It's such a fun show. Now, when I was a kid, I used to watch this show. I think it was on Discovery Channel called Robotica. Okay, there was this bald host who was very intense. like, welcome to Robotica. Let's do it. And it was just these nerds who built these robots. And they would put them in a ring and the robots would fucking fight. At first, in Robotica, there was a, an obstacle course, and then whatever robots, you know, were able to pass the obstacle course would fight to the death in, like, a pit with, like, spikes at the bottom and shit. It was fun as fuck, man. The robots could have little weapons and stuff. It's cool as fuck. Well, um, little did I know that this, is, this shit's still been going on for fucking years, and it's called BattleBots. And there are two seasons on Netflix right now. There are five seasons total, so you can once you watch the first two seasons, you can find the other seasons online somewhere or something. There are so many fucking cool robots. There's this robot called Tombstone. It's shaped like a fucking casket, and it has this like spinning thing in the in front that like crushes every other fucking robot. You see pieces flying off of them. There's this amazing robot called Bronco. It's got this flipper. Every it can flip like robots and like feed into the air, and it's fucking crazy. There's this awesome robot called uh, called Beta. It's got this fucking hammer and it just like smacks shit with a fucking hammer. It's like beating these other robots. It is so much fucking fun, man. I'm telling you, it is addictive. It is crack. My friend Elias and I have been watching it non-fucking stop. I'm in love with like with, with Kenny Florian and Chris Rose and Farouk and the cast and everyone. It's so fun. The robots are great. There's a very cool robot from Brazil uh, called Minotaur. It's so awesome. Oh, there's another very cool robot called Blacksmith. It's it's just so much fun, guys. If you have not watched BattleBots, do yourself a favor. Fucking turn it on. It is so fucking fun. You're going to nerd out. You're going to geek out. It's better than UFC, man. It's better than boxing. I, I swear, dude, these robots look so cool. They can get so creative. Um, check it out. You will not regret it. Fucking BattleBots, baby. Folks, thank you for watching this episode of Do Not Worry. Uh, I know it was a little bit heavy. I spent a lot of time talking about Patreon and you guys giving me money. Obviously, no pressure. Again, and thank you so much for supporting the this channel for so long. Uh, and, you know, it got heavy with the Anthony and Latoya stuff, but I'm glad to have all this stuff out of the way. Next week's episode, I'm going to try to announce what my documentary is going to be about. It's a very special project that I've been wanting to work on for a while um, I don't want to jinx it and I don't want to announce it too soon because I want to avoid another Anthony and Latoya situation. But like I, I want to talk about it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. You know how it works. Watch some battle bots. And as usual, do not worry. Do not worry.